Hi, my name is Mike Adams, and this is Dr. Brandon Lawrence. Uh, we thank you for tuning in. Uh, what we'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about who we are, our company, and our device. A little bit about my background. I am a 12-year vet in the medical device space. I started my career in sales and then uh, have worked my way up through the executive level uh, suites and now am uh, CEO of Scone Medical Solutions. And I'm an emergency medicine physician in Phoenix, Arizona. I've been treating uh, COVID-positive patients since March. Uh, and I'm really excited to get this device into our ERs. So Brent and I came together initially, we've been friends for a couple of years now. Uh, and back in March, he posted on Facebook that he was looking for some help uh, in getting out some innovation boxes. You could talk a little bit about what the innovation boxes were and then how we started out. Yeah, so the innovation box is something that we, we found on some of the various physician uh, forums, and it was this doc in Taiwan that had uh, released this. It was just basically a barrier protection for during innovation um, of patients that were under investigation for coronavirus. Because we're finding that the infection rates for hospital workers, healthcare workers in general, was, was much higher during um, codes or during innovations or anything that aerosolized the virus. So this basically was just a sneeze guard acrylic box that we were trying to ship you know, as low cost as possible to docs all around the country. Immediately after I saw your post on Facebook, my, my wheel started to spin on how I could help. What are we doing to try to get this box out? How do we need funding? What are, how are we going to ship them? Uh, even though I wasn't even directly involved at that point, I uh, went ahead and forced myself in. Speaking to one of my colleagues, he jokingly said, well, why don't you reach out to the Flex Seal guys, right? They create seals. Uh, so I didn't have a contact there, but not being afraid to reach out to everyone, uh, I did. I reached out and actually spoke to Phil directly. Uh, so the guy that you see on those commercials slapping tape onto boxes and closing water holes, uh, they immediately jumped in and gave us $50,000 within two weeks uh, and then provided 200 plus rolls of Flex Seal tape in order to help seal up. We got to slap so much tape on the box. So much tape. It was, in fact, I had child labor. We had my uh, seven-year-old cutting <laughs> tape and helping package boxes. Uh, so with those funds, I mean, we were able to ship out over 550 boxes. At no cost for the docs that needed it. Yeah, completely no cost. And what was great is it, as it started out just kind of as a local deal, once the word spread that there were free boxes, I mean, we were on uh, GoFundMe and it became one of the top GoFundMe pages out there for innovation boxes so that it really grew faster than we thought it would. And, and it was great that, that even Flexio was able to come back in with some more cash and uh, kind of help that grow. But one of the things that we saw uh, with that is that Mayo received one of the boxes, and I know you can speak to Dr. Yeah, so we ended up sending a pretty big order of 10 boxes. Usually it was more like three or four to different hospitals. They wanted 10. And uh, we sent it to them. They were very grateful. And uh, a number of weeks later, I get this call from Dr. Wallace, who's uh, in research, involved in research there. Um, and he said, hey... We've done. Uh, we've made some modifications to your your device here, and we wanted to speak with you about uh, kind of making this a, a mainstream thing to distribute. And uh, he had essentially added a negative pressure element to these boxes that will help uh, drastically reduce the aerosolization of the virus during kind of different procedures, or even just the patient being in your emergency department. And uh, so through that, we were able to make some further modifications from the original design, and have come to come up with a, a pretty streamlined, important device. Yeah, so I think it's important to talk about that fact uh, that what they did was they utilized the old acrylic box, right? right. And just essentially drilled some holes and, and added some suction to it, um, which is great. But why don't we talk about a, why negative pressure is important, right? What are yeah, negative pressure yeah. rooms? Yeah, so, so in every hospital we have negative pressure rooms and it's basically like a, a technique for infection control. So if you look at a room, you'll, you're going to try to decrease the pressure in that room, drying out anything aerosolized, and that usually takes upwards of 80 or 90 minutes to fully clear. Now, what we're aiming to do with our box, and which we've shown in our, in our studies, that we can actually clear um, internal to the device uh, within four to five minutes of all aerosolized particles with zero escaping. So how were you trained, right, as a medical professional in utilizing negative pressure even before COVID? Why, why were we using these rooms? So we were using them for uh, people that we thought had um, different communicable illnesses that could aerosolize, whether it's meningitis or tuberculosis. And we would just kind of stick them in there and go in there as infrequently as possible because, like I said, it took a long time for the actual viruses to clear. So how many rooms are typically in a hospital? 
So it's pretty variable because hospitals have you know varying sizes to begin with. Um, speaking just to my hospital, we had a, a handful of them on ICU. We had a handful of them, meaning like a few, right, on tele, and then we had. Supposedly two in the ER, but only one was working at the start of all this. So there's this mad scramble in March to try to just create more negative pressure rooms. And that it was time consuming, financially consuming, and we actually had to have rooms blocked off during a pandemic, so it was kind of a mess. So how often were you using these rooms during COVID and then? Oh, they were pretty much always maxed out. Because we had to give, you know, if you had to give nebulized treatments, if you needed to put someone on BiPAP, CPAP, if you needed to intubate someone, if there's a code, like, they're pretty much always full. So the lack of rooms and the, the availability for patients to be able to be in those rooms is critical. Uh, that's why it's going to become such a game changer in the fact that we've shrunk down a full-size room into what is essentially a small box that can be placed on a patient and on the bed. Why is that important to you? So, first of all, it's going to help throughput with the hospital. It's going to make the logistics of trying to put these patients in different rooms and different parts of the hospital so much easier. Um, the device itself is, is incredibly easy. There's zero assembly required. It just goes right on the bed around the patient. It's see-through so they, there won't be any claustrophobia. We've tried it out with nurses that have anxiety and claustrophobia and they, you know, they, they did just fine in it. Um, there's one port for oxygen. There's two ports for suction. It's okay if you only have you know, one, one port for, for the negative pressure suction aspect of it, but it clears a lot faster with two. Um, there's actually three viewing windows. So with what we realized with the, with the uh, acrylic box is that if you were at certain heights, uh, you'd be looking kind of right at the, the corner and your, your viewing angle would be obstructed. So we actually made it what we call a cabana shape where it's got three different surfaces um, that you can actually view the patient in if you're doing a procedure such as an innovation. Um, it has four access holes, so where a lot of these acrylic boxes only had holes for the uh, emergency provider, um, this one has holes on both sides as well for respiratory or nursing or even conceivably, conceivably doing um, uh, endoscopy, bronchoscopy sort of procedures as well. And then, uh, as I mentioned prior, it's less than five minutes of clearance when you're using the two uh, suction portholes. Yeah, those are all great points. I think what's what's fantastic to, to think about is if you're in a rural area, maybe you don't even have a negative pressure room, but if you have access to oxygen and suction, which we know is standard in every patient room, every ER, every every single room in the hospital essentially is gonna have some sort of level of oxygen and access to suction, you now have a negative pressure environment. Correct, available. and many of them. Yeah, so in your mind, Right, thinking about how you work using negative pressure rooms, how would you use this device in your practice? So I think it's a game changer for infection containment um, and also for throughput in a hospital logistically. Uh, I think essentially any PUI that comes in the hospital. So what is a PUI? Sorry, a person under investigation and that generally is something that's triggered by a triage nurse that's any degree of respiratory complaint or fever. Um, I think any one of them should be immediately going into this box if you feel like they're going to be um, admitted to the hospital. Uh, that said, I also think it should be pretty universally used for innovations. Um, we've seen now through our trials that there's just no aerosolization of this, of this virus outside of, the, uh, outside of the device. Okay. So would that, would that be the case with any intubation, not just COVID? I think any respiratory complaint at this point should. Any other uses of the device that you can think of outside of that? Uh, so a couple things that we're, we're looking at using it as a use uh, would be for endoscopy, bronchoscopy, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and I think um, if we're putting these people in these devices early, meaning like in the emergency department prior to them going up uh, to, their, to the patient rooms or into the ICU, uh, conceivably we can be using these for, for family visits, end of life care, that sort of thing as, you know, we won't be emitting the virus within the room, it should be a, a clean room. So have you had any experience with that? Uh, unfortunately, quite a bit. Um, one family that comes to mind is uh, a family that their uh, father, the patriarch of the family, was, was in the ICU for three to four weeks and every day they'd just sit outside his ICU window for 10 hours in the middle of the Arizona summer. So it's just brutal and we'd bring them out soft drinks and cookies and just try to at least help their, their stay be a little, bit, a little bit enjoyable, if you can call it that, being sitting, sitting out in the 110 degree weather. So conceivably, so conceivably they wouldn't have to sit out in this in this weather, and they could be at least you know maybe one at a time in the in the room with uh, with their loved one. And have you seen that that would be an impact to the patient? I mean, even in their recovery or how that? So we've seen that 
a lot of these patients become depressed and isolated and personally I think there's a pretty big mind-body um, connection and I, I can only see that doing good. So I know you've been using the innovation boxes up to this point while you wait for scone to fully be released. Uh, recently the FDA put out a letter regarding innovation boxes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so the, the innovation boxes, they're passive protection, meaning it's just barrier. Um, what we like to kind of joke around is just a sneeze guard acrylic box. Um, I think part of what the issue is is that uh, obviously we know the particulates within the box don't clear. So when people rip the box off them after an innovation, conceivably all the um, particulates can just be aerosolized back in the air and, and almost make it even worse because they're more concentrated. So that's why I think this negative pressure aspect of it is just so important. And they are obviously promoting that as well. In that yeah, so the, the FDA now is, is um, promoting that we should have more of a, an active protection, meaning that there's a negative pressure drawing out the particulates that are within the device. So as we get ready to launch our first iteration of this device, uh, manufacturing is going to kick off in September, so devices will be available mid to uh, end of September. And then we're already starting work on our second generation of that device, making improvements, getting market feedback, uh, listening to the physician users to see where we can improve on an already great game-changing box. Uh, the other thing that we're working on concurrently is also an EMS type product, which I know you've had some discussions with folks. Yeah, so this kind of was born from a occurrence that happened in Phoenix. We actually had, I think it was 77 uh, firefighters slash EMS that were out due to COVID either diagnoses or symptoms during the height of our um, hot spot in Phoenix. And what we'd like to design is, is kind of like a self-expanding version of this that they can just stick PUIs in uh, upon arrival at the scene of, of uh, their 911 call. Yeah, I mean, that, the thought being that they are literally the front line and not knowing they're getting, what they're... Yeah, exposed left and right. And you don't always know what, you're, what kind of call you're walking into. Yeah, so something that will be quick, easy access, uh, peel packed, ready to go, open it up, place it on the patient, you're ready to go. Um, so uh, that's where we're at now. I mean, I know we're ready to get this device out into the market. Uh, one of the ways that you're gonna be able to access this is either through your direct sales rep or even direct orders uh, from the hospital. So if someone like yourself wanted to order, you could easily go online and, and have these delivered to your facility. So we'd like to thank you for your interest in our Scone device and all that we're doing here at Scone Medical Solutions and helping to protect healthcare workers. And as a healthcare provider, I think this device is just crucial for our safety going forward. And I'm really excited to get this, this up and running.